All right, so welcome back. Today in this video, we are gonna be looking at structural engineering. Now, this is the 11th topic out of 14 as you're studying for your civil FE exam. All right, and today we're gonna be looking specifically at analysis of statically determinant beams, columns, trusses, and frames. So I have a few practice problems that I want to go and walk with you through. And then um, I'm gonna be given some extra little prior knowledge things that you'll need to know or conceptual things that could really help you for this section. So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, this one, number one says, an overhanging beam with a length of six meters has a concentrated load of eight kilonewtons applied at the free end. Additionally, there is a uniformly distributed load of two kilonewtons per meter over the entire length. Determine the static determin determinacy of this beam. Okay. So what information are we given? All right. We are given all of the applied forces, right? And I have that kind of already shown, do you believe? So we have applied forces that we're given. We're also given that it is an overhanging beam, right? So what is an overhanging beam? Well, if I draw this right. overhanging beam, I would assume similar to it's like a cantilever beam, and there is a fixed fixed um, support, and then they said that there's a concentrated load coming down. For eight kilonewtons. And then they also mentioned that there are there's a uniform uniformly distributed load of two kilonewton meters over the entire length. So I'll just say we got some uniform load coming down. And that is gonna be two kilonewtons per meter. All right. So what are we trying to find? We're trying to find the static determinacy of the beam. Yeah. Okay, so what formulas might we need for this? So if you don't know, which I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend as if I don't know. I would start by looking through the handbook, right? And if I'm trying to find static determinacy, then I probably would uh, search. The best thing to search would be determinacy to figure out what that even is, right? Okay, so if I search determinacy, there's three things that come up. All right. Stability, determinacy, and uh, classification of structures. Okay. So, with this, basically, you can find whether something is uh, stable, unstable, or, or uh, and statically indeterminate or statically determinate. And that's what our answer choice is pretty much asking us for. So we need to look at this and determine um, what uh, the number of members would be. So I would specifically use this um, frame, e fr the frame equations down below and I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. So uh, we're, the variables that we would need would be uh, M which is the number of members okay 
R, which is uh, the number of independent reactions, and then J is uh, the number of joints, or C is the number of condition equations based on eternal moment uh, or forces such as internal moment, okay, at a hinge. Right. Okay, so I'm gonna say that we're gonna need to use this 3m plus r, and we don't know what the symbol is, so I'm just gonna say equal to start. So this equation is the same except for one uh, is would be less than, one is equal to, or one is greater than. So I'm just gonna choose the equal to for now, but once you plug in your members, reactions, it's gonna tell you which one to, or in, which one is correct and how to classify it, whether it being, unsta being unstable, stable, and statically determinate, or stable and statically indeterminate. All right, so we have 3m plus r is equal to 3j plus c. All right, what would m be? m is equal to the number of members. Right. So we just have literally one member there, right? So I would put m is equal to one. What about r? r is equal to, what does r mean? Uh, number of independent reactions, okay. Uh, so reactions, if you have a, a support, then that support has reactions, right? And so for a fixed um, support, how many reactions would you have? Well, let's draw them out. We got, uh, and I'll just, this is, I'll just say this is point A and this is point B. So we have a, a Y reaction. We have a, a X reaction. And then we also with fixed supports, you have a uh, moment. So you have a, moment about a I'm just gonna call it that so how many reactions is that well you got one in the y one in the x and then your moment so that's three you have three reactions uh what about a uh, joints joints is equal to so joints is how like how many uh particular uh places that your beam or your frame i count them as glued to a certain piece so this is to connect the two you need your fixed support and your uh, beam so that's one joint so they're joined together so this will be one what about c there's no e internal hinges or anything, so uh, C is gonna be internal moments either, so there's, C is gonna equal to zero. So when we plug this in, we get three um, times one, all right, plus three, wait, three times, yep, one plus R, which is three, is equal to three times J, which is one plus C, or zero. Okay, so six is what? Greater than three. Okay, so being that six is greater than three, right? I know that I'm using this one. And so I know that it's stable and statically indeterminate. So this is gonna be stable and statically 
uh, indeterminate, which would be a C in this case. Now, there's a few other things that you want uh, to make sure that you know, right? Sometimes they'll ask you, well, to how many degrees is it statically indeterminate, right? So because um, it is for this side, uh, it's three, basically, I guess how to best explain this is, is if, if something is statically indeterminate, it has a certain amount of degrees to where it would, uh, it would be able to even out the equation. And so for this to be able to even out the equation, you would need three more on the other side. To be able to even it out so it's statically indeterminate uh for three degrees basically to the third degree rather. so if the equation came out to be uh five to one right then this would be statically indeterminate to the four degree fourth degree okay and so on and so forth so just something to note another thing you're not always going to be given a fixed reaction right so good review how many reactions are on a pin uh, so you have two and so right we have our in the x direction and in the y direction. What about for a roller? Call that a pen. Anytime you see a triangle, that's typically a pen. All right, anytime you see a circle, it's typically a roller. So the, real, the roller only has one reaction. And then that's symbolized as a roller. Other things. Um, oh, your joints change. So I'll draw, let's just draw this, right? I'll draw a beam. How many joints would be on this particular beam? So you got a pin, a roller, and a fixed joint. So every time, remember, every time it's glued to something or stuck, that's where a joint goes. So to be able to connect your beam to your pin, that's one joint. It erases every time I do that. Okay. So to connect to my roller, it's another joint. And then to connect to my fixed support. So that's gonna be three joints. Okay, what about for an internal, uh, what about for a hinge, right? So if you have a hinge, it's gonna kinda look like this. And they'll call it out. They'll say an, a hinge like this, which you'll they're they're gonna point it out. But um, for all hinges, there it has uh, two reactions. Just to let you know. Hey everybody. I know I didn't take time to formally introduce myself at the beginning, so I did want to let you know who I am and how I can best serve you as you're studying for your civil FE exam. So my name is James Huntley, and I am a civil engineer who has helped hundreds of individuals pass 
and dominate their civil FE exam. Now, I know this test is tough. And as you're going through material, you may be saying, Ugh, I don't remember learning this stuff or gosh, these variables are so confusing or you just feel like you're really, really busy and there's so much material that you need to go through that it's a bit overwhelming. So I did want to let you know that I do help and work with individuals one on one to ensure that they pass their civil FE exam. And I've had individuals that have worked with me for 10 weeks and that's the longest that it has been. And I've had individuals that have worked with me for two weeks and we went back to back day after day after day, hours on hours on hours, putting in the work, um, working together to ensure that they went ahead and passed. Right. And this exam is so important because I know that you want to make more money. Um, I know that you want to, you know, get some promotions and be able to further your career and have your PE. So definitely want to open and extend a hand out. Want to be able to save you time, right? Because I know some people that watch my videos, you may have been watching my videos for six, nine, even 12 months, and you still haven't passed your civil FE exam. And that is the one thing that's keeping you from making more income, more impact, and furthering your career. So it's definitely costing you um, money, resources, everything. So looking to create more success stories, um, I am looking to work with individuals one-on-one. -on -one. I wanna hop on Zoom with you. I want you to share what you're doing as you're solving these problems so I can spot out what you may be struggling with and open your eyes so that you're not going into this test completely blind. Now, for some of you, you may have failed a test once, twice, had some people fail five times, um, or you may be wanting to take this test initially and you just wanna make sure that you pass it up front. So do have one-on-one -on -one services. I also have some uh, do-it-yourself uh, courses that if you're like, no, I got this, I got it all on my own, I know everything or I, I'm going to take the time to study everything. I do have some resources and materials to be able to help you in that way. But my biggest fear is that you're investing in something, uh, these programs or these courses, and you know, you're not uh, getting back or having proper feedback to help you and to push you forward. You're just giving a bunch of information and no one's sharing with you what you may be actually struggling with or what's keeping you from passing your FE exam. So looking to create a ton of success stories. So feel free um, down in the description box below. I have a ton of resources, including one-on-one -on -one coaching. Let's hop on a call. Uh, it's no cost to you as far as, you know, us talking through your goals and what you're trying to do um, and kind of getting a feel for where you're at. Um, so have some programs where I can work with you one on one. And there's also some do it yourself courses, practice exams, study guides, resources, free material, all of that down in the description box below. So feel free to check out that stuff. If you like the video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. This is what I do. Um, we want to get you to the next phase of your civil engineering career um, and leave a comment. If you had any questions about um, what I went through, the information that I covered um, and feel free to um, definitely schedule a call with me and I'm looking forward to creating more success stories. So. Be sure to check out this next video 